So this is at my board where I left off from, <clears throat> excuse me, last week pretty much. So I did the tip of this wand um, and then I skipped out a few little steps uh, which I didn't film. So I'd done that much. Uh, what I did here is I drilled a part, a whole part way down into the stick uh, and then I bent the wire into there and then I'm going to put polymer on there just to make sure that that's fixed and then I drilled a hole through the stick here so that I could thread the wire through uh, it's just to help secure it uh, and then I covered the end of the stick with some just kitchen tin foil which I sort of shaped to make a nice handle shape there uh, and then the the wires under there and then I've covered that with this is this green here is just scrap clay so I've covered the tin foil with that so basically the reason I've put the scrap in here is just uh, because I this is all the gold I've got which I didn't realize so I'm just trying to be economical so by having a layer of the scrap already on there then I can do a thinner layer of the gold over the top um, and I'm just hoping there's going to be enough of it so the wire along here is it's partly to give it something interesting to look at and also it's to give the polymer because I want to work in some little polymer bits coming down here it's to give the polymer something to grab onto um, I think having uh, like a little bumpy wire will give it more more of something to grip onto than just the bark of the stick. This is some gold polymer clay with a hair in it. Let's get that out. So I'll um, just put this through the pasta machine a couple of times just to um, get it conditioned up again. And then I'm going to roll this really thin and then hopefully I'll be able to cover the the handle with it. Okay, so I've rolled this out to the thinnest setting here. Um, so I um, should be able to now cover up all the tin foil and this scrap. So the polymer will stick because this is still unbaked clay. Uh, the polymer should stick to that quite nicely. So I don't need to be too fussy about this shaping because I'm going to sort of squish it into a right shape anyway but I am trying to make sure that I'm getting all the air bubbles out so I'm working from one side to the other so what I did up here uh, to get this texture is I had a little ball tool and I just um, worked the surface with it so this is doing two things it's um giving it the texture but it's also helping to work out any bubbles and gaps so what I'm doing here because I'm getting air bubbles is I'm just pricking some little holes so that as I add the texture then the, the air bubbles can escape through those little holes so if I work this one here, there's an air bubble. I don't know if you can see there's it's it's slightly raised. And also <clears throat> when there's an air bubble you can see the clay moving. So I'm working from the outside to the hole and then I'll just as I texture it it just squishes the hole back closed again. So the thing with the air bubbles is 
if they there when I bake it, the air will expand and then it'll distort it and and make sort of weird shapes and also it'll make a weakness because then this is super thin clay. Uh, the wall of that bubble will just be the thickness of the thin clay, if that makes sense. Looks like a giant peanut. When the peanut's in the shell. Okay, so I want to attach that on the end there. So what I'm going to do... is this is the super thin clay so I'm going to cut a strip there and then I'm just wrapping this around so that let me see. slightly around the edge of the stone so that will stop it coming out so the clay is probably not going to be very sticky so it's not going to stick like glue to the stone so it's actually the the physically curling around the edges because then the clay will be rigid and then the the stone won't be able to pull out so I'm going to um, just sort of squish in some clay here So that there's more support for that. So it doesn't matter too much what it looks like at this point because I will come through and put something decorative around there. So these are little bits that I made when I was trying out different color combinations for stud earrings. So these have been baked, so that's why I'm putting a little speck of the liquid clay. And I think what I'm going to do is, um, because this is the gold because I was trying to um, preserve it this is a very thin layer so I'm going to just put a blob here so that this has got something to squish into so I'll probably squish a few of these in and then come back uh, with the little copper colored spirals.
So there we go. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now. Thanks for watching.